don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Get ready to take a trip down memory lane. All right, as you can see here, we're playing the Sega Genesis Echo of the Dolphin. Now, in today's episode of Memory Lane, we're going to be showing off my Sega Genesis collection. And we're going to be starting off with Sega Genesis controllers. So let's start off with this bizarre looking controller right here. We have a Sega Genesis Striker. And I picked this up with a gaming lot and you see that the, uh, the cable is a little frail. But it still works. And uh, this controller is made in Taiwan. Let's see if you can get a close shot at that. And the buttons are very colorful. You have neon yellow, blue, magenta, green. You have all the rapid turbo fires here, which by now they're kind of like seized up. It's they're hard to actually maneuver. The start button's right there in the center, and this one has a uh, stereo jack on the bottom. So interestingly enough, this was designed for the Model One Genesis. And at the bottom of the of the, uh, the controller, you have a uh, headphone jack and the Genesis plug-in right there which is let's see here nine prongs so you have to plug both of those in and use the controller right here and uh, on a future episode I might actually try this out it's actually very comfortable to hold and the main, the main reason why it's comfortable to hold is it has these weird grips on the back where you place your fingers. And it actually feels pretty good. Strangely enough, if you hold it backwards like that, it actually feels really even better. Somebody should des design a controller like that. Hold all the buttons on this side. Then of course we have one of our six button joystick, joy pads right here. Probably one of the best controllers ever made. A six button Sega Genesis controller. And as you already know, there is a classic Sega Genesis console coming out. Very soon, within the next week or so, it has plenty of good games on it. It already has outstanding reviews by people who have gotten their hands on it. And I personally have seen the box and the controllers in person. And I got a chance to actually pick up the actual box of the Sega Genesis Mini, and it's pretty heavy. Now that's my air conditioner. Let's turn that off for a second. Then we have this controller right here called Dox. And uh, this controller has seen better days, as you, you can see here. The uh, casing that goes around the wires it's definitely uh, seen better days I mean, look at that got a whole bunch of uh, colorful looking cables right there and uh, this has your turbo buttons right here there is no switches or anything like that you just push your turbo buttons A, B and C your direction pad there, your start button there it's pretty much the same exact shape as your normal standard Genesis controller and on the back you have a switch and that switch turns your turbo on and off or actually it's for slow so I guess if you put the slow on what it does is it pauses rapidly real quick while you play the game and it's also made in China which is not a big surprise And of course we have our Sega Genesis Mega Fire controller right here. Now I think that this is not a third party controller. It looks like an actual real Sega Genesis Sega branded controller. It's not that common of a controller at all. It's model number 1657 Sega. So it's definitely a real Sega, Sega controller. And as you can see here, let me see how this looks on the camera for a second. Yeah, it looks okay. 
So as you can see here, it has your turbo functionalities on the controller here. So this is a real branded Sega controller with turbo. And I've had this controller for a long time. I probably still works fine. There's really nothing wrong with the actual cable itself. It looks like it's in good shape. And of course we have another six button controller. I usually use the six button controllers. More six button controllers right here. They're a little dusty. Need to be cleaned off a little bit, but I believe that both of these six button controllers are the same exact models. 1653, 1653, so they are the same exact controller. One of them has a mode button that doesn't work right. See the mode button's on top. That switches between six button to three button. So there is a handful of games that the, does not like the six button controller. So just so you guys know, if you collect for Sega Genesis and you have a six button controller, not all games are compatible. And the rest of the, of the controllers that are in here are Sega Saturn controllers. And of course we have our Japanese Sega Saturn controller right there. Now I have, as far as the console goes, I have it over there. The console, I will take a separate video, which you'll probably see it right now, is the Model 1 Sega Genesis with a 32X. And the uh, 32X works perfectly fine. And the audio is piped out of the auxiliary port in the front. You know, it's in pretty good shape. Every once in a while it does collect dust, so I have to wipe it off and everything, but... Let's check out the first batch of Sega Genesis schemes I have here. Looks like we have Alien Storm. And Alien Storm... Got the cartridge right there. Now, not all games I have manuals for, but I try to get the cases, at least. And Alien Storm is a nice side-scrolling shooter action game. Check that out. Uh, this game might be on the uh, the classic. If you're getting the Sega Genesis Classic mini console, it's worth it because if you switch it from English to Japanese, you unveil a whole bunch of different library games from Japan. So not only do you have American games, but you can switch it to Mega Drive games too, which is a little less unknown fact about the Sega Genesis Mini. We've got Cyborg Justice. This is another uh, interesting beat em up here. And I love the uh, box art of the Sega Genesis, or the label art. Kind of reminds me of something you would see on the Atari 2600. Some crazy robot looking stuff. And of course, we have Alter Beast. And we got the manual and everything right there, the cartridge, all that stuff. And Alter Beast has the uh, the wolf beast looking creature right there on the front. You got the uh, Altered Beast spine label and the screenshots on the back. I don't have a whole lot of Sega Genesis games, but I have enough. I have a pretty decent collection of Gunstar Heroes. For some reason I have a Vander Holyfield box and I actually never played this game before. But I, I guess when I got the Genesis this probably came with it. Never cared to play it but... Got a Vander Holyfield right there with all its belts and that looks pretty cool. This will be a nice game to get signed by a Vander Holyfield. Get it like an autograph, that'd be pretty awesome. And we have Comic Zone. And now this is where Sega kind of skimped out on casing, because they used to have plastic cases and then they switched to cardboard. You can see cardboard cases don't hold up that well. It's the reason why most NES games don't have their cases. So back when the Sega Genesis was kind of around 95 or 96, they switched to cardboard. And uh, in order to open this up, you had to like slide this box out, I believe. And uh, that's how the comic zone looks. You have the manual, you have everything right there. 
And that's basically what holds the game right there. And there is a bonus, according to this, which I don't think is in here, there is a bonus CD that has a, uh, a soundtrack of some sort. And uh, that is long gone. So this, that CD's not in here, just so you guys know. But if you do have a copy of Comic Zone with the CD, most more than likely it probably worth a lot more than what this one is. This is just a basic boxed copy of Comic Zone. The only thing I care about is playing the game. And that's pretty much why I have the game. It's definitely pretty cool. Now we also have Ghouls and Ghosts for the Sega Genesis. Definitely one of my favorite series. I also have the uh, Super Nintendo version, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, or Ghosts and Goblins, whatever the hell it's called. And uh, the label art, the box art, looks really, really awesome. Look at that, it's one of my favorites. And of course we have Golden Axe 1 and 2, definitely a must-have if you have Sega Genesis. And, uh, this one happens to be the Sega Classic Edition. So you can think of this as like the greatest hits from like the PlayStation. This is the equivalent of that. So long before the greatest hits, Sega had Sega Classics. And then we had Golden Axe 2 right here. A great sequel to uh, this game right here. Nice, awesome, uh, medieval looking beat em up game. And over here we have Kid Chameleon, another very, very good, interesting uh, side scroller. And uh, for some reason, my copy of Kid I just noticed this now, but on the back, it's actually missing the barcode. That's interesting. It looks like somebody like cut out the whole barcode back there. That is really weird. You got the cartridge in there and everything. That is bizarre. I know they back back in the day they used to have the proof of purchase. I wonder what the background story is on that. And then of course you have Poacher Poacher Guys to Poacher Guy. Haunting Haunting versus Poacher. Starring Poacher Guy. Okay, let's say that again. Haunting Storm Polter Guy. This is an electronic arts game. And it's a very, very interesting scary game, I guess. You control like a ghost and you have to go around and interact with different objects and scare the crap out of the family. And it kinda looks like the Sims almost kinda on the back. And they're very, very proud that it was a 16-bit game as you can see there, 16-bit. And uh, the, the case on this is much more thicker than a standard Sega Genesis case. It was definitely a lot different looking. And now uh, these AEA cartridges had a different look. So if you look at the cartridge right here, they had that weird yellow thing right there on the top and the cartridges the cartridges were a lot bigger and if you look at that it's pretty interesting I remember having a few EA games back in the day and I always thought that was like a button you push like it looks like a button let's take a look at that I always thought that this part was a button that poacher guy right there what a great game if you guys never played this, you have to check it out. Of course, these cases were a lot more sturdy. Uh, the mechanism that held the cartridge in right here was not the greatest, but you can see behind the cartridge, you had Electronic Arts emblem right there. The old EA logo. It's a big case. And it will definitely protect your game, but it's a lot more flimsy. 
And then we have Land Stalker. It's another interesting Sega Genesis game. And you got this Land Stalker Spine label. I guess this you could probably consider it like an RPG type thing. Let's see if we can open up the case right here. We got Land Stalker. I don't have the manual for it, so I would have to track that down. And then we have uh, Mercs for the Sega Genesis, and this is kind of like something you would see out of like the Neo Geo. It's like a top-down shooter Contra type thing. If you like Contra, you might actually enjoy playing this. Now, as far as I know, it's exclusive to the Sega Genesis. And it says it's made by a program by Capcom also. So that's interesting. You see a couple of screenshots on the back right there. Then we have Marvel Land. This is another one of those crazy, interesting side-scroller taboo games that you might as well consider a hidden gem. It's definitely made by Cap uh, Namco, that is, not Capcom. And, uh, it's definitely not, it's a quite the unusual game. But it's worth picking up if you're collecting Sega Genesis games. It looks pretty good. Got the cartridge in there. And we got some more games to go. We have Outrun 2019. So definitely a pretty awesome racer on the Sega Genesis. I definitely enjoy playing this. You can see on the back some screenshots. It's a futuristic ver version of uh, Outrun. We got uh, Miss Pac-Man. Now Miss Pac-Man is definitely a pretty decent Pac-Man port. It's actually pretty good, not bad at all. So if you enjoy playing Pac-Man, more than likely you'll enjoy playing this. And then of course you have, you cannot have a Sega Genesis collection without having Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker is a great game, uh, interesting side scroller. Excuse me. You see some screenshots right there on the back. And uh, definitely, hands down, probably my favorite label art on the Sega Genesis. Has definitely that craziest hardy looking label art with the rainbow and uh, some crazy collages going on there. Definitely reminiscent to something you'll see on the 2600. And we have more to go. And I'm trying to keep these in alphabetical order just so you guys know. We're about halfway through. We got Ranger X. This is like a run and gun -um type deal with a Beck robot. And you can see right there, there's a couple of screenshots at the back that look pretty cool. You can see the cartridge right there. And uh, this actually still has a UPC label on the back. For $49.95, so that I don't know what store that is, but that's how much it was sold for back in the day. $49.95. This game goes goes for a lot of money now. I feel congested for some reason. Am I allergic to Sega Genesis? Maybe, I don't know. We have the uh, Prince of Persia game right here. A Tension game. So Tension's basically Atari. And uh, this is definitely uh is a Prince of Persia cartridge right there. I actually printed the, the actual label out. So this whole spine label and everything right here, the, the whole label that's around this box is printed out. Uh, I cut the label, printed it out, and I put it inside the case myself. So I had a few extra cases. Uh, this cartridge in particular, I had it loose at one time. So I just created my own label. We have Fantasy Star 3. And of course this is a role-playing game. I'm not big into role-playing games, but I do have this game. I heard it's really good. Got the 
cartridge right there. I always have a handful of role playing games in my collection. <coughs> even though I don't play them. Now here's a really nice hidden gem. Subterranean. So sub Terrania. Subterranea that is. So you can see right there, kind of a really obscure shooter that not too many people have heard of. But I tell you what, it's actually really good and it has really good graphics. And it's something that I think it's only on Sega Genesis. So this operates only with NTSC televisions. It's Genesis and Sega CD systems purchased in North America and South America. Except for Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay. What the hell? Oh, that game is pretty awesome. If you guys want a good shooter, check this out. And definitely one of my favorites right here, Saturday Night Slam Masters. In uh, Sega Genesis version of this game, it features an exclusive barbed wire deathmatch with explosions and Actually, I don't know if it has explosions or not. I'm probably thinking of uh, Fire Pro Wrestling, but it does have the Bob Wire Mash. And that's something that the Super Nintendo version does not have. Uh, this this version also, for some reason, is missing the referee. So, unlike the Super Nintendo version, the referee's walking around in the match. This version doesn't have that. The referee just does not want to be in between you and the computer guy, or you and your friend when you're battling on the Sega Genesis, because it's a lot more barbaric. And we have the Rocket Knight Adventures for the Sega Genesis, another great side-scroller. Now uh, this game is definitely quite the well-known game on the Sega Genesis made by Konami. And it says, order your official Sparkster t-shirt details inside, so <laughs> there is no details inside anymore, as you can see. The, uh, the manual is probably long gone. When I started collecting Sega Genesis games, I pretty much hit up eBay, and whatever I can get inside the boxes, I grabbed before the prices went up. So nowadays, the prices that I paid on those games probably are like twice the amount now. So let's check out another batch of Sega Genesis games. We have a favorite of mine, Sonic Spinball. I know that Sonic Spinball is definitely not everybody's favorite, but I liked the game. I thought it was pretty good. And this is complete. It's not really that hard to find this game complete with the manual and everything, so this one has everything with it. Then another great fighting game on the Sega Genesis right here. We got Super Street Fighter 2. And uh, this game is definitely really, really good on the Genesis, especially with the six button controller. And they get a nice description on the back of what this game is all about. And this is an exclusive Street Fighter 6 button pad offer inside. So according to this, if you go to inside the manual, let's just check that out real quick. The manual is in pretty bad shape, so. It says that this special deal expires January 30th, 1995. So Unfortunately, we're like 14, almost 15 years too late. Somewhere in here, there's an offer for the six blanket controller. And I'm not seeing it here. But, more than likely someone probably used that special offer. You have a little diagram of the six blanket controller right there. I find that to be really strange. There's like some sort of ring on this manual. Maybe this looks like a rental copy or something. Maybe they had it hanging up and then they just put it inside the case. That's really weird. I have never seen that before. So there is no special offer in here anymore. More than likely it's like one of those cards. So let's get this Let's insert it back inside the case, close it up, and we have Super Hang-On 
for the Sega Genesis. Now, I personally enjoy hanging on on the Sega Master System a lot. I played that game quite a bit back in the day. This one I didn't play nearly as much, but the uh, Sega Master System version I played a lot. Alright, so these are the pretty much the obvious ones for here. We have Sonic the Hedgehog 1, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 right there, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, got all three of them right here, and they're probably all complete too, they all have their manuals, so everything's pretty much good, good shape, they all play. And of course, we have Sonic 3D Blast, and this is a rare exception of having like a box game that's in really, really good shape. I mean, this one's not bad, not scratched, or no, nothing wrong with it. Look at that. It's in really, really good shape. Then we have Sonic and Knuckles, another interestingly, uh, pretty decently good shape game. And uh, just in case you guys have never seen what the cartridge looks like. Probably one of the most weirdest looking cartridges of all time. Because that's what it looks like right there. You have to plug Sonic 1, 2, or 3 into this, and then you get like additional levels and all kinds of crazy stuff, features, and everything. It says play Sonic and Knuckles or connect with uh, a Sonic game. It's a lock, lock on technology. A new technology, lock on. Well, I could have sworn that Lock On Technology was invented by Game Shark or Game Genie. I mean, <laughs> I think Game Genie did it first. All right, let's get these back so they don't get messed up. Now, of course, we have a, a few more over here. We got the. Shining in the Darkness for the Sega Genesis. And this is like a bit of an RPG game. And this is another label that I printed out. Because I originally just had the cartridge. And you see the cartridge is a little beat up. But this is one of those games that kind of goes for a lot of money. So I just had a spirit box laying around and I printed out the label. Inserted the label myself and kept it inside of a box. And of course, this is another obvious must-have for the Sega Genesis. Streets of Rage 1, Streets of Rage 2, and of course, Streets of Rage 3. Most people prefer to have the second one. I personally like all three of them. There's no discrimination on uh, Streets of Rage games here. I definitely enjoy playing all of them here. And uh, the second one is complete. And it's not for resale, as you can see there, it's not for resale copy. And then we got the third one right here. The third one is not complete, so the first and the third are not complete, but the second one is. And of course we have a Street Fighter 2 Special Championship Edition. So this is like one of the older Street Fighter 2 copies, I guess. Uh, before they came out with the six button controller one. Then of course we have Samurai Showdown, made by Takara. SNK, it was reprogrammed by Takara for the Genesis. Now Takara is definitely one of my favorite 16-bit programmers because they actually made a lot of good fighting games, or they ported a lot of good fighting games over to the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo that originally were on Neo Geo. So they pretty much saved you probably $500 so you don't have to go out and buy a Neo Geo AES console. And uh, buying the games on the Neo Geo are very expensive, so like hundreds of dollars. So instead of buying the console and the cartridge, you can just buy the game on whatever console you have. And they were pretty good. 
And of course we have the... And let's make sure it's recording. And of course we have the Ninja Turtles game right here, Tournament Fighters. And uh, this basically plays out just like Street Fighter. A nice Konami hidden gem on the Sega Genesis. We've got a few more to go. And we have the Echo game right uh, that's actually playing on the TV right here. Empty box. It's actually playing right now as we speak. Echoes the Tides of Time. And then we have Last Crusader, and this is another game that I originally did not have the box for. And you can see that this is, appears to be like one of those third party boxes that more than likely you would find at like a Funko Land or someplace. Because it was designed to fit both regular standard cartridges and EA big fat cartridges. And I printed the label out myself and inserted it myself. It's definitely not the greatest quality, but it gets the job done. And then we have NBA Jam. Another great Sega Genesis game. I remember playing the crap out of this game. This is actually the NBA Jam Tournament Edition. Now uh, this is another label that I printed out and inserted it myself as well, just so I can have it inside of a box. You can tell the difference. It's when I printed out on my Canon, the colors are a little bit more dull than the actual real Sega Genesis prints, as you, you can see there. This is Arcade Classics, which I actually uploaded a video on this a few days ago. This is Centipede, Missile Command, Pong, and all Atari games, but interestingly enough, they don't even have the Atari logo or nothing on here. They do mention Atari on the copyrights, but there's no Atari logo at all. Which kind of pisses me off, because I personally like Atari. But, at least you can play some Atari games on your Sega Genesis. And this is in pretty good shape. It has all the manuals and everything. And then we have Wiz and the Wiz, another crazy hidden gem, like a little platformer game. It's a very, very colorful, nice, interesting looking platformer, interesting looking label art. It's quite the unusual game. You have to run around and try to catch all these uh, creatures, I believe rabbits. I haven't played this in a long time. Maybe this is something that we should check out in the future. Have the uh, this is complete too. It has the manual and the cartridge. So now we have a few not so complete games. I'll put these back first. All right. So first thing on the list right here for not completed is the uh, Game Genie, and the Game Genie works perfectly fine. I use this to play. Japanese games. So that's basically what it's used for. Not only that, we can also add different weird cheat codes and all that stuff. Then I have this thing. Now this is supposed to let you play Japanese games, but I never could get it working. This is called a Honeybee. It's a really weird looking cartridge. These are not easy to get hold of. It's a gold cartridge and you're supposed to be able to insert a Mega Drive game on top, just like that, and then insert this down inside your Genesis and be able to play a Japanese game without anything crazy going on here. Let's see if we can remove that one out. So I never ever could get this working right. It, it, it recognizes the game and whatnot, but for some reason it this doesn't bypass the region lock. So. I own it, but it's useless to me. So we'll put that back in the box. And again, that's called a Honeybee SG300. And I guess this was quite the popular thing back in the day. And I only have two Mega Drive games at the moment. 
I have, of course, Golden X3, which is very, very expensive to get hold of in a box, which is the reason why I don't have a box copy of it. And of course, I have the sumo wrestling game that's exclusive to the uh, Mega Drive over in Japan. And it's quite the interesting sumo wrestling game. And I don't off the head. I really don't know how to pronounce that. If you can see that, you can take a guess and uh, try to translate that. But it's definitely a, an exclusive over in Japan, as you, as you can see. It would have been cool if they ported this to uh, North America or Europe. And of course, uh, Golden Axe 3, definitely the best Golden Axe. Uh, definitely a great game. I believe that it was only playable in the US on the Sega channel, the uh, internet access service. Uh, you were able to play this and stream it online, but there, there was never a cartridge form of this game over in North America, which sucks, but uh, you can still play it if you get the uh, Game Genie. So, that's pretty much my Sega Genesis collection. Uh, great console. If you guys currently don't have a Sega Genesis, I strongly recommend getting the Sega Genesis Mini. Plenty of good games on it. There's like over 40 games as far as I understand. Plus, if you switch the language to Japanese, you'll unlock a completely different library of Mega Drive games. So, if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane, don't forget to give a thumbs up and play some Sega Genesis. Definitely, I'm going to be playing some right now. Plug the controller in and play some Echo the Dolphin. <laughs>